Jiu-Jitsu is one of the only sport that men and women train closely together. Is it okay to do so or not? Is it considered, or is it common, excuse me? I mean, kind of. I think that most people have at least a little bit of discomfort when they first roll with the opposite sex at first. How often are we this close to the, <laughs> are we that close to the opposite sex? We're never that close to them, typically, unless it's like an intimate setting. Jiu-Jitsu is unlike any other combat sport, demanding a level of physical contact that blurs the boundaries between training partners. This is where the debate sprouted. Should men train with women in BJJ? Or should women be in BJJ at all? Are they putting themselves at a disadvantage? Or does their presence enrich the sport, diversify the talent pool, and provide opportunities for growth? Uh, what is challenging about being a woman in jiu I guess some people sometimes think that like being a woman in general like isn't necessarily tough per se. You can't do anything I guess that a man can do. You know, it's like people like myself and some of my teammates who get in here, we can do all those things that they say we can't. It's definitely scary at first, but once you get your feet wet, like you'll never look back. Notable BJJ practitioners like renowned coach Faraz Zahabi. It's strictly jujitsu and I never have an impure thought. This group of men here that I hear, you guys are the holiest, you guys are. I look up to you and I say, these men are angelic. That if, I, if they roll with a beautiful, attractive girl, not the least bit of, they're dead inside, let's say. Now. <laughs> the first British ADCC world champion, Fionn Davies. I don't like that it has to be separated. Women are most likely to be victims of sexual assault and going into a sport with a lot of contact could be very uncomfortable for a lot of women or a lot of people would discouraged from sports like this, um, whereas now it's a lot better. And five times IBJJF champion Mikey Musumeci, and even the GOAT himself, Gordon Ryan. He says this helps him to fine-tune his skills even more, as he's rolling with someone smaller than himself. How you, and if you guys train together, how do you manage that? Believe it or not, I actually prefer, um, like, she's my main partner. She's who I work with most. Number one, just because I'm lazy, I don't like to move heavy guys. <laughs> I don't like to move heavy guys around. Makes sense. Number two, because... When you're dealing with someone smaller, you have to be, like, every movement has to be more precise. All had their own opinions on these very issues, and we're going to lay it all out and let you decide. But first, let's answer the first question. Chapter 1. Is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu the best martial art for women? When it comes to choosing a martial art, there's no shortage of options. Karate. Wrestling. Muay Thai. The list goes on. But Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is the most suitable for women because, first, BJJ is all about grappling. Forget about throwing punches or kicks. In BJJ, you learn the art of takedowns and ground movements. Now, here's the beauty of BJJ. It doesn't rely on brute force. Nope. It's all about using your opponent's movements against them. It's like a strategic chess match on the mat. You learn how to outsmart and outmaneuver your adversary by understanding body mechanics and leveraging your opponent's weaknesses. But BJJ isn't just about dominating your opponents. It's also about transforming yourself by leveling up your flexibility and mobility. Now, don't get me wrong. BJJ may be the queen of martial arts for women, but everyone has their preferences as well as their preferences for a training partner. Chapter 2. Equality on the Mat one of the remarkable aspects of BJJ is that training with women cultivates a culture of respect and sportsmanship. It encourages men to treat their female training partners with the same respect, care, and consideration they afford their male counterparts. Some women go into jiu-jitsu with the aim of learning self-defense, but in order to make them feel comfortable training with men, there has to be a high level of mutual respect. This mutual respect creates a supportive and inclusive environment that benefits everyone involved. Through the exchange of knowledge, both men and women can grow and improve, fostering a sense of camaraderie that extends beyond the training mat. By encouraging men to train with women in BJJ, we also challenge societal norms and break down gender stereotypes. Traditional stereotypes often perpetuate the notion that physical activities should be segregated along gender lines. However, BJJ defies these antiquated beliefs, promoting the idea that men and women can participate in physical endeavors together without undermining each other's ability or compromising their own development. 
This is one of the ways one champion, Mikey Musumeci, was able to train with his sister and improve every day. And I had my sister as well, and me and her would just train in the garage with each other like every day. That definitely pushed me to evolve. When men and women train together, they learn that skills and abilities have nothing to do with gender. It's not about being a guy or a girl. It's about being a skilled and dedicated practitioner. Like, I don't understand how you don't see the difference here. It's saying you can only train with the women because we can't resist you if you're in the men's class. Green is like, oh, <laughs> who did you put there in your gi, that sexy gi? Oh, you, you whore. <laughs> Forget about those silly stereotypes. In BJJ, women can be fierce competitors and talented fighters just like men. And when men see women kicking butt on the mat, it opens their eyes to a whole new world of possibilities. Embracing equality on the mat does not mean ignoring the physical differences between men and women. Rather, it means understanding and appreciating the diverse attributes each individual brings to the training environment. Chapter 3. Precautions on the Mat Okay, let's start with a common worry some men have with training with women. Sexual attraction. Yeah. It's gonna happen, things get in the way, but if I grab somebody's boob, I'm gonna say, oh, sorry, didn't mean to do that. You know, you know, don't put a uh, knee in the, you know, groin. I do that all the time. I'm passing the guard, sorry, man. <laughs> you know, the less we sexualize jujitsu, the better. BJJ involves close physical contact, which can make some people feel uncomfortable. It's natural to find someone attractive, but during training, it's essential to stay focused on the technique and maintain professionalism. In order not to bite the cherry, some men have decided just not to roll with women. And she's like, you're joking, right? And she got offended. And I'm like, no, I'm not joking. I I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to offend you, but I don't roll with women. Some do so because of their religious beliefs. It can also play a role in whether men feel comfortable training with women in BJJ. Some religious traditions have guidelines about physical contact between unrelated individuals of the opposite sex. It can be challenging to reconcile these beliefs with the nature of BJJ, which requires close physical interaction and is okay to accept one's religious beliefs and ways. Another concern men may have is the perception that training with women who are less physically strong or have less experience in BJJ is a waste of time. However, strength isn't the only factor in BJJ success. Technique, strategy, and mental agility are equally important. Training with partners of various skill levels, regardless of gender, can bring new perspectives and improve adaptability. Diversity in training partners can enhance your overall game. It's one thing to be proportionate and to focus on technique over strength. Now, the reason why that's cool with the women is because, again, if you roll with women, you're going to have to learn how to play in that lower gear of intensity. And again, that will then allow your body to have the feel of that, where you're exchanging techniques and you're still going for stuff, but you're not like crushing them or you're not like slamming them or anything like that. That's a valuable skill. This brings us to a sensitive concern some men face in the fear of being wrongly accused of sexual touching or inappropriate behavior during training. It's crucial to acknowledge the importance of consent boundaries and creating a safe environment for all practitioners. By emphasizing clear communication, mutual respect, and proper training etiquette, we can alleviate these fears. A lot a lot of people brought up just communication. I feel like your partner's not giving you enough pressure or giving you too much pressure. There's common complaints with with smaller people, not necessarily just women, just uh, if the person is putting too much pressure and not allowing them to move, there's some something to be get gained, right? But if you can never move, that becomes kind of frustrating too. You never get a chance to learn how to go on the attack. Training academies can implement policies and guidelines that ensure everyone's safety, value, and protection from any form of harassment or misconduct. Remember, embracing equality on the mat doesn't mean ignoring our physical differences. It means understanding and appreciating the unique qualities that each person brings to the training session. Where do you tilt your camp? Are you on the side that rolling together should be normal for men and women to do? Or should it only be by choice? Please share your thoughts in the comments. We would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.